So, because Dublin there is taking to his seat, Michael O'Leary, he's just grabbing. So, well, let's just show you what's happening anyway. Uh, that, that is the news conference. That's Michael O'Leary, and he's about to speak. Okay. We get the camp. The picture's done. That'll wait. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome. Thank you for coming here at reasonably short notice. Um, I thought what we would have we handed out the press releases. Okay. I thought what we might try to do, given the uncertainty that we managed to create over the weekend over the plan to cancel uh, up to 50 flights a day for the next six weeks, is uh, hold a press briefing here this afternoon and then try to deal with, explain the issue and deal with um, any questions people may have. So here's the factual position. We, on uh, Friday afternoon, took a decision to cancel an average of slightly under 50 flights a day for the next six weeks. We did so that because for about the previous eight or nine days, our punctuality had fallen from something uh, of an average of about 90% to under 70% uh, for two reasons. One, we are suffering a lot of ATC and weather delays. Two, while all of our schedules are fully crewed, knock-on delays that are arising from uh, air traffic control and our weather delays are knocking into the following day's flights because of crew hours. And we are also, from the 1st of September, trying to allocate a large amount of annual leave to our, principally our pilots, uh, in blocks of four weeks. So we went through, uh, sorry, so we've been going through the peak summer period without allocating much annual leave, which is why we were able to run the full summer schedule through the busiest months of June, July and August without any significant disruption. In fact, we carried 12.7 million passengers in August, an increase of 10% over the traffic we carried uh, the, previous, uh, the previous August. We're not short of pilots. We presently have over 4,200 pilots in Ryanair. That is an average or a crewing ratio of just over five. It's about 5.2 pilot crews, captains and first officers per aircraft. And generally, each aircraft only requires two uh, crews per day. Um, but what we have messed up is the allocation of holidays and trying to over allocate holidays during September and October while we're still running the uh, most of the summer schedule um, and while we're still running most of the summer schedule and taking flight delays. officers per aircraft and generally each aircraft craft only requires two uh, crews per day. Um, but what we have messed up is the allocation of holidays and trying to over allocate holidays during September and October while we're still running the uh, most of the summer schedule um, and while we're still running most of the summer schedule and taking flight delays because of principally air traffic control and um, weather disruptions. I'm not trying to blame air traffic control or weather disruptions. The blame for this lies with us, but we have tried to over allocate uh, leave to pilots in September and in October while still running a busy summer schedule and we don't have enough standby coverage to be able to cover uh, the inevitable disruptions that happen around this time of the year. Why did that change occur only in the first week of September? It occurred because we have an unusual situation in Ryanair this year. We're moving from a 12-month leave period uh, this is somewhat technical. We historically have allocated our leave from the 1st of April through to the 31st of March, so what we would call a fiscal year. The IAA required us, uh, starting on the 1st of January 2018, to begin to allocate leave on a calendar annual year. So, in other words, from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. And we are running this crossover nine month period when we're trying to allocate almost one year's leave during a nine-month period from the 1st of April 2017 to the 31st of December uh, 2017. And we simply do not have enough pilots in the month of September or October to be able to allocate this volume of leave. Um, the leave is being allocated to pilots as part of our conditions, working conditions agreement pilots. We allocate them, they get six weeks leave a year, but four weeks of that comes in one block. And we've been trying to allocate 
this big lumpy one block during the month of September. So in the first weekend, while we had reasonably good punctuality through June, July and August, no disruptions, no crew shortages, we published rosters for both the month of September and October that showed all of our flights being crewed and operated. But as we take disruptions, particularly over the weekends, we had examples this weekend of thunderstorms over Barcelona. We had an aircraft missed a curfew in Dusseldorf, in, uh, Dusseldorf Airport on Sunday. As a crew, an aircraft gets stuck, we have no backup crews available uh, and that knocks into the entire schedule. We have two choices then. We can either run the operation with a 55-60% punctuality with far more flight disruptions, inevitable cancellations um, and huge passenger dissatisfaction caused to 35 or 40% of our customer base. Or we do what I thought last Friday was the sensible thing. We need to take out about 50 flights a day for the next six weeks while we have this crewing issue. Uh, cancel those flights um, and thereby create additional standby pilots and additional standby aircraft that will enable us to bring the punctuality back up to 90% and eliminate the risk of further cancellations over the next six weeks. We focused and we issued this notice on Friday afternoon. We focused immediately on Friday on communicating with all those passengers who were due to travel on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. And they all got emails before close of play on Wednesday evening. Yes, it was short notice. Yes, it was unexpected, and for that I sincerely apologise, but we were doing our best at short notice to communicate with those passengers who are most likely to be immediately affected. Over the weekend and today, we have now finalised a list of cancellations that will run over the next six-ish weeks to the end of October. And uh, the figures, what we have tried to do, and the reason why we're running slightly delayed in, why didn't we just publish the list? because we spent most of the weekend trying to find lines of flying that we can cancel at the bigger bases. So Dublin, Stansted, Milan, Bergamo, Rome, Fumicino, where we can cancel flights, but on out of airports where we have multiple daily frequencies to London, out of Dublin, to Milan, out of Rome, to Madrid, out of Barcelona. And that by taking out one of the lines of flying out of each of one of those busier bases, we will have many more alternatives to communicate to passengers rather than just telling them, sorry, the flight is cancelled, go away. What we're trying to do is to cancel flights on those busy routes like Dublin Amsterdam, which we operate four times daily. It may be reduced to three times daily. Dublin Stansted, for example, which we operate 12 times daily, may be reduced to 11 times daily, and so on and so forth. And that's why we've had a delay over the weekend trying to work out these cancellations or to try to allocate these cancellations to those routes where we can offer passengers the most amount of uh, alternatives. Uh, we've given you today, uh, in this afternoon, the press release. And what I've tried to explain in the press release is we've cancelled one line of flying at, uh, what is it, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of our busiest airports and bases. We've cancelled two lines of flying at Stansted. And what we mean by a line of flying, it means, say, for example, in Barcelona, we have 12 lines of flights at Barcelona. So we have 12 aircraft based there that does one full day of flying. We will take out one of those 12 full days of flying, generally speaking, though, on routes where we have other flights that day. And we will now be trying, we're going to be issuing emails to all our customers this evening, as well as putting the attached notices up on our website and on our social media pages. And we've given you a sample, for example, of what flight cancellations will take place on Monday, the 25th of September, 2nd, 9th, 16th and the 23rd of October. In total, there will be 50 flights cancelled on Mondays. There will be 44 cancelled on Tuesdays, 42 cancelled on Wednesdays, 48 on Thursdays, 52 on Fridays, 48 on Saturdays, 52 on Sundays, which is an average of 48 flight cancellations a day. This is a large number of flight cancellations, but to put it in some context, we are operating more than 2,500 daily flights. So it amounts to less than 2% of the total flying programme. I don't want to in any way diminish or play down the inconvenience that will be caused to the 2% of passengers who will be affected by these cancellations, but I do want to point out that 98% of our flights and 98% of our customers will not in any way uh, be affected by these cancellations. Uh, and the reason we've taken the decision is because that's what best protects those 98% of flights and the 98% of customers. It minimizes the, their delays and it eliminates the risk of any other 
uh, schedule or uh, scheduled cancel cancellations because of these uh, the crew leave issue. All customers will on these flights through to the end of October will receive an email this evening highlighting firstly the alternative flights that they can transfer to, hopefully on the same or at worst the next day. If they're not satisfied with the alternative flights offered, they can have a full refund and they will all be entitled to their EU 261 compensation entitlements that we will not be trying to claim exceptional circumstances. This is our mess up. Uh, when we make a mess in Ryanair, we come out with our hands up. We try to explain why we've made the mess and if we've, when we will pay compensation to those passengers who are entitled to compensation, which will be those flights that are cancelled over the next two weeks. Um, in terms of its impact on the company, yeah, clearly there's a large reputational impact for which, again, I apologise and we will try to do better in future. In terms of lost profitability, we think it will cost us something of the order of up to about €5 million Euros over the next six weeks. And in terms of the EU 261 compensation, we think that will be something up to a maximum of €20 million, Euros, but it much depends on how many of the alternate flights uh, that our customers take up uh, over that uh, period of time. Uh, in, I want to, uh, on behalf of everybody in Ryanair and on my own behalf, apologise. Firstly, to the uh, 400,000 customers who will be affected by these cancellations over the next six weeks. I also want to apologise, though, to the 18 or 20 million customers over the next six weeks who were unnecessarily worried over the weekend and have been worried, oh, Jesus, will my flight be cancelled? Uh, we didn't. We were so focused, I think, on Friday about dealing with the weekend's cancellations. We didn't focus on the concern or worry we would cause to passengers uh, whose flights won't be affected at all over the next six weeks. And that accounts to some 18 million passengers. Again, to put in some context, the 400,000 passengers whose flights will be cancelled but will be offered alternative flights. I say sorry on behalf of Ryanair. I say we're putting out, we want to put our hands up, which is what we do when we make a mess. And we will try to learn from the mistakes we've made in this case. We clearly messed up in our rostering department. We should, and there should have been a better early warning signal coming through the months of July and August that this was, there were going to be operational disruptions in September because we had, could only barely cover the roster but didn't have sufficient um, a, a standby crews. Two other issues I want to touch briefly on. There's been a lot of speculation, much of it wildly unfounded, as to the outcome of the Mons case in Brussels last week. The Mons case is one of jurisdiction only. It will not affect Irish contracts. We are required by law, mainly for pilots and cabin crew operating Irish aircraft, to have them on Irish contracts. They will continue on Irish contracts. Those Irish contracts may have to affect more of the uh, labour or social conditions or labour conditions in other EU countries, but they already reflect that because Irish labour law reflects uh, EU requirements, which is what drives most other uh, labour obligations in other EU countries. It will not cost us anything in terms of additional pay. It will not cost us anything in terms of union recognition. There's this uh, misleading kind of impression, mainly created by unions, that somehow Ryanair prohibits uh, people joining unions. The Irish Constitution has for many years guaranteed freedom of association. Everybody in Ryanair who works for Ryanair is free to join a union, and if they want to do so, they're free to do so. We, however, are free to continue to negotiate directly with our people, and we will continue to do so. It will not lead to unionisation in Ryanair. Um, nor will it lead to uh, material changes in our Irish contracts. The one most uh, significant one we can think of uh, that we found thus far, for example, is that in, we would typically have 12 months probation under our Irish contracts. In Germany, uh, there is a legal preclusion on anything more than six months probation. So, for example, the only significant outcome of Mons at this point in time on our Irish contracts would be we may have to reduce the probationary period from 12 to 6 months in Germany. Everybody will still have their union entitlements, their rights, etc., etc., because they're protected under Irish legislation, uh, as Irish legislation has adopted most of the EU um, requirements. The one other issue is Alitalia. We have made two uh, non-binding offers for Alitalia. There is a process on which we are in the foothill of. Uh, there is a third round of offers due for or to be made by people who are interested in investing in or acquiring Alitalia. It will be the first round of binding offers that is due to be submitted by the end of September. We will certainly be submitting an offer for Alitalia. 
we there will be one of I assume eight, ten, twelve parties who will be meeting, uh, submitting offers for Alitalia. Uh, we have not, as some of the papers uh, recorded last week, are about to buy Alitalia or. Uh, we are going to make an offer, but it may take, I think, four or six months for those offers to be completed. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Hang on before I ask any other questions. Are there any other issues that I've left out in dealing with the rosters? Da, 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 sorry, do I think this will happen again in 2018? No. What's different in 2018, by the way, is we move on the 1st of January at the, again, the IEA's insistence, we're on to a 12-month annual leave period. So we have 12 months in which to get rid of these four or six weeks blocks of pilot holidays. The difficulty we're dealing with uh, in September and October is we're trying to get rid of a disproportionate amount of four weeks blocks of holidays for pilots while we're still running the summer, much of the summer schedule through September and October. It doesn't arise, we believe, from the 1st of November because we move into the winter schedule when there is less flying and we have more room to allocate um, annual leave. And with that, now I'll open up to questions. Really? Yes. Uh, Darren from Sky. Darren, yes. Michael. Um, We're not in a mess, by the way. <laughs> we have clearly messed up 2% of our flights, which is somewhat different to the other 98% of our flights that would be unaffected. In saying that, you say your slogan is always getting better. Yes. Clearly for lots of passengers, that's not been true. How much do you personally take responsibility for this, given the fact that it's been pretty clear that this was coming for some time, and how it's been handled? I mean, have you personally helped to damage the reputation of your own company? And second of all, are you saying there's no problem with the retention of pilots at the moment? Given the fact that Norwegian Air seem to be suggesting that they've managed to recruit 140 of your pilots this year, is there a problem with retention of pilots? Okay, there's a couple of different questions in that. Uh, How's AGB going brilliantly? I mean, there's a reason why, for example, two weeks ago in August, we announced record traffic numbers of 12.7 million passengers. Our load factor was 97%. There's only 3% of our seats that are not filled. Passengers are loving the changes we made and the, the uh, more customer-friendly policies. That doesn't mean that from time to time we don't make mess-ups. And we do, and this is clearly a mess-up. I take responsibility for the mess-up. It is my mess-up, and therefore I have to clean it up. Um, but does it affect, I think, the remarkable progress Ryanair has made You under the always getting better banner? No. And I think the 98% of customers who will be unaffected by these cancellations continue to support what we're doing both under always getting better and by lowering our airfares this year by 6%. Have I damaged Ryanair's reputation uh, with this, these cancellations? Yes. But I would rather damage the reputation of Ryanair by cancelling 50 flights a day, which would be less than 2% of our flights, than significantly delaying 40% of our flights, which would be something of the order of about 800 flights a day. We are going to disrupt and inconvenience uh, some 2% of our passengers in the interest of minimising the inconvenience and the delays being suffered by the other 98%. And for that, I take personal responsibility and I sincerely apologise. Michael, Next the, question, the, John. Is the leave that's been granted to uh, pilots between March and uh, December this year, isn't it being granted on a pro rata basis rather than on a full year that's been given within the nine month period? It's nine months of holidays that they're actually getting of leave rather than a 12 month block in a nine month period. And secondly, I say. Okay, let me deal with the first part of that question because I, I missed one of Darren's. Do, are we short of pilots? No, we're not short of pilots. We have 4,200 pilots today. Um, we don't agree with the Norwegian figure. As far as we can tell, yes, we've lost some pilots to Norwegian this year. The figure is less than 100. We have also recruited pilots from Norwegian this year. Pilots are coming to us from Norwegian last year and this year. There is a flow of pilots. Um, and to put that in some context, if you take our figure, which is less than 100, I mean, that's less than 3% of our 4,200 pilots. It's not a lot. Uh, we do lose pilots. Typically, our, our rate of attrition on pilots every year is less than 5%. And it's mainly pilots going to long-haul airlines. Norwegian are offering long-haul flights on 787s. And there are some young and more what, somewhat uh, innocent, bewildered pilots who think the grass is greener flying long-haul aircraft for airlines who can't make any money. The Air Berlin pilots are dealing with that at the moment. And I think the uh, Norwegian pilots will be coming back to us in the not-too-distant future to deal with John's point. Uh, yes, we prorated the holiday entitlement. So you went, the pilots went from having a 30 days leave entitlement to something like a 24 days leave entitlement. What we messed up, and I think trying to do uh, be nice to our pilots, is we agreed though to allocate to maintain their four week block. 
So in a normal 12 month year where we give away uh, six weeks of holidays, you get a four week block together, which is, by the way, four by five, 20 days plus for 16 days. It's a 36 day block of holidays. We said we try to preserve the four week block and it is that four week blocks, those four week blocks that we can't accommodate over the next uh, certainly two months. We are writing to all of our pilots today. We are looking for people to, we're actually going to buy back some of those four weeks blocks of leave from them. And if we don't get enough sufficient takers or people who want to sell us back some of their leave, then we will cancel some of that leave as well. So is it, will all leave possibly be cancelled? Because pilots have no. obviously been told that this, that these delays are going to last up until the end of December, which we were told I've seen the memo last week. And given that you're saying that there's only going to be six weeks of delays, how are you going to, how, how do you, how do you get to, how do you uh, prevent disruptions happening? We're going to pull out of that news conference because Michael O'Leary there dealing with questions uh, and a long statement, first of all. Simon Gompertz is still with me here. Um, yeah, I mean, he's open. We messed up. This is what it's going to cost us. But it's a fairly basic error. This is a calendar cocker. Yeah, we see the explanation. Uh, the pilots have to um, cram their holiday into a shorter period because they're changing when their year end is. They have this chunk of holiday of four weeks, which they tend to take together. They've, because of the busy summer schedule, um, they've tended to take that in September and October. And then that was OK. They had a very fragile rotor because as soon as something went down and there have been weather problems and air traffic control problems across Europe that um, Michael O'Leary referred to, then the rotor fell apart. But the question has to arise from that, you know, this is what an airline does. Their expertise is to be able to manage not just the planes themselves around so many different countries and through all that airspace, but the staff within them. So their expertise to do that, although Michael O'Leary took the responsibility upon <laughs> himself, I wouldn't have liked to have been in that roster department when he walked in on Friday to say, what's happened? Or the PR department, because as he, as he made the point, there is massive reputational damage to a big airline here. Yeah, I mean, he big reputational damage. Um, he tried to play that down, saying this is just affecting 2% of our passengers because the other planes are going to be OK. Um, and he's, he's counted the cost, 5 million euros of profits, 20 million euros the cost of compensation, around 17.5 million pounds. Does that mean people will get the compensation that they think they're... Well, you're entitled to around 200 pounds compensation for a short-haul flight uh, that's cancelled. If you do the maths and divide the 17.5 million pounds by 400,000 passengers who are affected, you only get around 40 pounds. So he's calculating that a lot of people won't get it. Two reasons for that. One is they've concentrated these cancelled flights on those hubs you heard like Stansted where a lot of their flights leave from and they think they'll be able to push people onto other ones which won't cause too much disruption they won't have to pay uh, compensation uh, and the, the other reason is that if you push it on beyond two weeks this is six weeks of delays as long as they give people two weeks notice of their cancelled flights they don't have to pay up either. Simon some some hope for passengers but for now thank you very much Simon Gompertz there. I want to take you to Ottawa in Ottawa